Hello everyone, welcome back to Z. In this video we will see what will occur when stars eat planets and the future of Earth. Subscribe to the channel and follow us. Imagine for a moment the landscapes that must exist for us to discover. We have yet to see even a fraction of the solar system's awe-inspiring grandeur, based on our limited explorations. When exploring the surfaces of other planets, such as the Moon or Mars, we travel to areas where we are confident our spacecraft will not be at risk upon landing. While locations such as Gale Crater on Mars offer fascinating geology and portray a picture of a once-humid Mars that may have supported life, it is ultimately an alluvial plain of muddy deposits and rock. We have not yet discovered the equivalent of Yosemite or the Himalayas on this planet. Consider Grand Canyon. Although majestic, it is not one of the largest canyons in the solar system. Greater is a location we've only ever seen from space and, until the 1970s, didn't even know existed. It is actually a network of canyons known as Valles Marineris or Valleys of Mariner after the NASA mission that discovered it in 1971 to 1972. This occurred after Mariner 9, and there is a mystery surrounding that long-dead spacecraft. We actually do not know if it still exists. NASA estimated that the spacecraft would persist in Martian orbit for at least 50 years after the mission concluded. It is unknown whether the spacecraft has entered the Martian atmosphere and perished, or if it is still in orbit, clinging to life. That in and of itself is intriguing. In say 10,000 years, will this canyon still be named after a tiny, short-lived spacecraft that arrived during a global dust storm, only to see it clear and report on the beauty of the valleys of Mariner? Mars is not really a site where one would expect to find mariners, at least in the modern geological epoch, so it is possible that future inhabitants of the planet will forget why the canyon is so named. The valleys are over 4,000 kilometers in length and up to 200 kilometers in width. They can reach 7 kilometers, or 23,000 feet, of depth. The mid-ocean ridge system, however, still retains the record for the longest known canyon on Earth. The origin of Valles Marineris is a mystery, as it does not appear to be a canyon formed solely by erosion. Instead, it may be a giant tectonic crack in the surface of Mars, though erosion did play a role in its size, and there are indications of liquid water activity. It is also conceivable that it originated as a massive lava channel. As majestic as the view from its rims must be, we have never seen this amazing feature of Mars up close and certainly not from the ground. Eventually, this will likely change, and presumably not in the distant future. The reason is that Ingenuity, NASA's Mars drone aircraft, has been a resounding success well beyond its intended lifespan. This paves the way for future missions using significantly more capable helicopters with greater range to investigate the Martian surface, including mountainous regions and canyons that would otherwise be inaccessible. These systems are also capable of landing on the ground and capturing images from that perspective. The drone technology used in Mars and Titan space exploration promises to reveal the most extraterrestrial landscapes these planets have to offer. However, despite the awe-inspiring nature of those other planets' landscapes, the Earth's geology and life in the form of the planet's extensive forests give it the appearance of being the most beautiful planet in the solar system. However, the Earth's loveliness is ultimately fleeting. There was once a time when this world was microbial and the land was desolate, and there will be a time in the future when it is again, as the sun's luminosity makes life on this planet increasingly difficult. This world will undergo numerous gradual but overall profound alterations in the coming years. In approximately 250 to 300 million years, the majority of the familiar mountain ranges and earth features will have been eroded and replaced by new features. By this time, it is believed that continental drift will have reassembled all continents into a supercontinent, although the exact configuration will depend on the model. Assuming that human civilization has either fled the planet or become extinct, this event will almost certainly trigger a glacial period that will lower sea levels, increase oxygen levels, and decrease global temperatures, regardless of our past actions. However, there will still be a trace of our existence, as the Earth's fossil fuel reserves may not have been completely replenished by this time, although estimates vary. However, all of this may have an odd consequence. During this period of collapsing land masses and rising oxygen levels, it is also conceivable that increased competition between species triggered a period of extremely rapid evolution. 
This may be exacerbated by increased volcanism and the sun's increasing brightness. But it won't last. Whatever comes of rapid evolution from whatever progenitor species survive our era cannot be predicted, and it's difficult to imagine what it would look like, but it will all come crashing down in a massive mass extinction from which Earth's life will likely never recover due to the planet's decreasing habitability. This planet's life may end with a bang, followed by a slow, inexorable mass extinction. About 500 million years from now, the universe will begin to deteriorate significantly. The supercontinent, in whatever form it takes, will begin to fragment once more, elevating global temperatures in tandem with the sun's increased brightness. And this begins to disrupt the carbon silicate cycle, a crucial cycle on Earth. The increase in weathering of rocks and the beginning of ocean evaporation will cause plate tectonics to slow and ultimately cease. The carbon dioxide levels in the Earth's atmosphere will plummet as a result of this peculiar effect. What was once a problem due to its abundance is now a problem due to its scarcity. This marks the beginning of the end for the flora. 99% of living plant species use a very specific form of photosynthesis dependent on carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere. As water levels decline, plant species will become extinct one by one. The herbaceous plants are removed first, followed by the deciduous forests, and lastly the evergreens. In this case, however, there is a question, we know that life can adapt because it does so all the time, so it is unknown what kind of evolution may occur in response to these new pressures. There may be species that discover new niches and adapt to survive in a new form. This could involve the ability to withstand extended periods of dehydration, a trait currently observed in Earth bacteria, or highly efficient photosynthesis requiring less CO2. However, there is also UV radiation, as plants die, oxygen levels decrease, which increases the sun's lethal UV radiation reaching the surface. And as the temperature rises, more oxygen is removed from the air without being replaced, causing animals to endure. Complex life will become simplified once more, and the animal kingdom will feature smaller and more efficient forms of respiration. For a period. This likely implies that complex life on Earth will retreat to the extremes, hibernate, and do whatever they can to maintain their life cycle. At this juncture, only the oceans, or what remains of them, may support complex life. There are however hypotheses that the cessation of plate tectonics may provide a temporary reprieve for the Earth as a water planet. Eventually, however, all remaining photosynthesis ceases, signaling the end of terrestrial existence. Any water, which at this stage may only exist in underground pockets or at the poles, may be the only places where life can survive. This is expected to occur approximately 900 million years from now, after which only single-celled organisms will remain. In some respects, Earth will once again resemble its state at the beginning of life. The highest estimate for the last conceivable life on Earth is 2.8 billion years from now, although this is a very high estimate and the planet may be devoid of life in less than 1.5 billion years. Oddly, by this time, Mars will have warmed and will likely resemble Earth in terms of temperature more than Earth will at that time. Approximately at this time, the Moon will have moved sufficiently away from the Earth to no longer moderate its axial inclination, causing it to shift and become disorderly. Then, between 4.5 and 5.3 billion years from now, the Sun will enter its red giant phase. Almost certainly, this procedure will result in the Sun consuming the Earth. However, strangely enough, the story of Earth does not terminate there. Until recently, it was unknown what happens when a star devours a planet like Earth. Researchers from the University of California, Santa Cruz, led by Ricardo Yarza, recently presented a model of the solar environment surrounding an engulfed planet. As it turns out, the engulfment of a relatively small planet like Earth stirs up a star like the Sun, causing it to brighten, rotate faster, alter its chemical composition due to the planet's evaporation and the stirring, and even release gaseous shells. Some older, highly evolved stars appear to rotate faster than predicted, and it may be because they consumed planets from their respective planetary systems. Who knows what records of life in the universe have already been lost? And oddly enough, this ejection process may prevent a planet from being consumed when it normally would have been. When a planet loses enough mass, it merely enters a very close orbit, and the smaller star does not consume it. This could explain why some white dwarf systems have planets that orbit seemingly absurdly close to them. All of this is contingent on numerous variables, such as the mass of the planets and the magnitude of the red giant, and may not occur on Earth. 
Instead, the Earth may merely undergo a death spiral of evaporation as it approaches the Sun Center. Before this process is likely to conclude, the Earth will be reduced to its bulk's basic materials, dissipate, and incorporate themselves into the composition of the Sun. Some of this material may even survive the Sun's planetary nebula phase as it sheds its outer layers to disclose a white dwarf in the process of cooling. It is possible that some of the Earth's material is included in this remnant, or that an incinerated cinder remnant of the Earth will orbit this white dwarf until the end of the universe. More earthly matter could be ejected into the planetary nebula and may one day be incorporated into future planets. With all this new radiation from the colossal sun, however, the outer solar system must be questioned. First, it heats during the red giant phase, creating wholly new vistas in the solar system, such as surface oceans on Europa, Enceladus, and Titan, and new geological processes that shape the planets in the outer solar system. Unimaginable new mountain ranges and canyons exist today. As the sun transforms into a white dwarf, however, everything in the outer solar system reverts to ice, where it will remain for trillions of years. The Conclusion of the Solar System Thanks for watching everyone. Subscribe to our channel for frequent, in-depth explorations of the fascinating, strange and unknown facets of the universe we inhabit.